good morning and welcome to the fall conference of the Wharton School's Jacobs Levy Equity Management Center for Quantitative Financial Research. My name is Chris Gatesy, uh, Academic Director of the Center, and it's my pleasure to host today's event. Today's program highlights factor models and will feature three paper presentations and a panel discussion around the topic. Importantly, we will also be awarding the Wharton Jacobs Levy Prize for Quantitative Financial Innovation to honor Stephen Ross for financial innovation, recognizing Steve posthumously for his work in the area of multi-factor asset pricing. Clearly what has happened in the past several decades, and I think will continue to happen in the next few decades, is that innovation and entrepreneurship are just critical parts of finance and must be so. Quantitative finance has entered the mainstream of modern investing, yet there is still so much that we don't know about factors. Today's outstanding lineup of speakers will determine how far we have progressed in the art and science of factor investing and how far we still have to go. We will propose a global macroeconomic model for uh, value and momentum, uh, global strategies, and some other asset classes. And we expand upon the work of uh, Cliff Asnes, Tobias Moskowitz, and Lasse Pedersen, who gave us this beautiful insight that the value and momentum strategies can be applied everywhere. I'd like to start off by asking uh, for uh, the panel's view of the recent history and maybe long-term history of factor models. Where do they come from, from your perspective? How are they useful in your practice? And ultimately, we'll get to where they're going. So the terminology, um, the sort of lingo uh, is evolved. Um, and I think we're in a better place now. The question is, when are we gonna get to this next stage of, of literally being able to tell people, no, this is, this is what we're doing. Can we establish expectations around what someone should expect from a factor fund? As more of us practice these factor investings, yes, economic rationale is one thing, but if enough of us accept this idea of these are similar characteristics and I, I trade them as is, we will create that factor structure at least empirically for, for some time. So my feeling is that it's a new, ironically, it's a new, a, a new field for a new area. And so it will take a while. People mm. will have to see uh, good and bad times. Um, as one of my colleagues suggested, I think seeing good and bad times will, ex will it help people understand why you have those things in your portfolio. Like, you know, when the market crashes, maybe you do have other factors that help you hedge the pain. And so this is basically where we are today. I mean, we're, we're in the state of the world where we recognize that building a factor timing model is extremely difficult and there are a number of challenges to overcome. Um, and it is all too easy to get sort of caught up in what data relationships we've observed historically. The question that we're going to tackle in this paper is what's behind these anomalies? What economic mechanism is driving these violations of asset pricing models? And broadly speaking, we can think of three explanations, two based on model misspecification, so unmodeled risk or mispricing, and then a slightly more nefarious explanation based on data snooping. Now it's time for the commemoration of uh, the innovations, the work, the life of a great scholar and a great man, the late Stephen Ross, who is the recipient of this year's Wharton Jacobs Levy Prize for Quantitative Financial Innovation. We're proud that arbitrage pricing theory began as a working paper at Wharton, where Steve was a professor of economics and finance. It's very fitting that we're recognizing this monumental contribution with the Wharton Jacobs Levy Prize, not only because of his past connection to the school, but also because his innovative work truly embodies the essence of what the prize represents. Like many in the field, he struggled to reconcile the insights of the premier pricing model of the time, the capital asset pricing model, with some of its limitations, not the least of which was that it hinged on a single risk factor, namely beta. Steve's elegant solution was to create the first multi-factor model in finance. It recognized an asset sensitivity not only to market beta, but also to unanticipated changes in interest rates, inflation, and other economic variables. It did not require the strong assumption 
of human rationality that pricing models typically rely on. That opened up asset pricing theory to a world in which mispricing can occur and even be exploited before being arbitraged by market forces. Two things come to mind when I think about Steve. One is optimism and one is a supreme sense of humor. As you can see from all we've talked about today, he had a fantastic sense of humor. And the two are sometimes combined. I will, I will you know, I never saw anybody with so much optimism. It is appropriate to honor Steve today, given that some of his work was actually extended into practice by Bruce Jacob and Ken Levy. I co-authored a paper with Steve in 89. And I just have to say one thing about it. That joint research was a really special experience for me. And I got to see up close and personal, not only Steve's genius, but also his generosity of spirit. Steve's work is so pervasive, people don't even think about it, right? You know, people working in finance are like fish who don't know what it means to be wet, right? I mean, it's just, it's just Steve, Steve's work is just all, all around us, and you wonder, are people, you know, thankful for the, what, what he did for the field? It's like being thankful for the alphabet. This conference, this center, and the prize actually embodies everything that business schools and the Wharton School uh, is all about.